Hello, my name is Ed Hughes, and I'm here to talk about magic squares. More than talk about them, I'm going to teach you how to make a magic square. Now, magic squares uh, come in various shapes and forms and have various characteristics. Let's take a look at this one. This is a famous magic square. It's famous because it appeared in a, an engraving in the 1500s, so magic squares are nothing new. Um, this is a 4x4 four four, uh, matrix. It has 16 squares, and the digits uh, go from 1 to 16, so they're continuous. Now let's take a look at it. Uh, these are columns. These are rows. Let's take this first row and uh, see what the sum is. We have 5 here, and 13 makes 18 plus 16, 34. Let's take this uh, column. 3 and 10, 13, plus 6, 19, plus 15, 34. Let's take a look at the diagonal. 4 and 6, 10. Over here we have 24, to 34. This uh, magic square is a little unique in that we can take this center floor and 10, 11, 21, plus uh, 13, 34. We could take these two, 5, and add them to... Uh, 29, 34. Let's take a look now at the uh, a 5 by 5 magic square. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 columns. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 rows. It's 5 by 5. The magic square that I'm going to teach you to make always has to have a uh, be an odd number. 5, 7, 3, 9, 9. And that's because we start with the one in the center column. And there can only be a center column if we have an odd number. And here we have the center column and two on each side. If we had four, there'd be no center column. Let's take a look at this. Let's add up this uh, center column. Let's see, eight, 21, 40, plus 25, 65. Let's do this diagonal. All right, we have uh, 23, 36, 50, plus 15, 65. Do a roll, okay? Now, when I add, and this is something that magic squares are good for, I don't add consecutively. I look for easy sums. For example, here's 25. 17 and 18 is another 25, so we have 50 plus 15, 65. Let's take a look at uh, how to lay out these numbers so that we get a magic square. The gen I'm gonna, eventually, I will write down the five rules. Generally, we want to go up and to the right. Okay. There will be problems. When we hit the top edge, we have to have a special um, rule. When we hit this edge, we can no longer go to the right, so we have to have a special rule. Oh, here we go. We can't go up and to the right. When we can't, we go down to the over one and down to the bottom. So we go over to this column and down to the bottom. There's the two. Up and to the right, there's the three. Unfortunately, we can't continue because we've hit the right edge. The rule is similar to the uh, top edge one, except we go it's going to involve the opposite side. So we go up and over to the opposite side. Four, five. Uh-oh, we, now we can't go up. We're not at the top edge and we're not at the right edge. So the rule there is drop down one. So we, the five goes down one. Six, seven, eight. We're at the top edge again. So we go over and down to the bottom. Nine, we're at the right edge. So the rule was up and over to the other side. 10, we can't go up. We're not at the top, we're not at the right, so the rule is drop down. 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. Now this is a curious one because it involves both the um, right edge and the top edge. Yeah, we can't go up and over and we can't go over and down. So the default rule is drop down. 16, now we can go up and over, 17, uh, again we're stymied, we can't go uh, this way, so we 
can go over and down to the bottom. 18, 19, 20. Okay, we can't go into the 16, so we drop down. 21, 22. Can't go over, so we go up and over to the other side. 23, 24, same rule as the one. Over and down, 25. Now, there's a couple of uh, little hints that you can see that you're going astray. You don't want to get to the end and find out that uh, you've got a mess. This diagonal is always problem free. See, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. No problem. Before we uh, do another one of these and uh, formalize the rules, there's a, a few things that uh, we can see on here. The, uh, in this diagonal, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, the numbers are, uh, the steps between the numbers are one. So the center number, 13, is the average. And there's five numbers, but the diagonal has five numbers. So we take five times 13 and we get 65. So the center number is always the uh, average and you can, in this type of magic square. So you can take the center number and multiply by the size of the matrix, in this case five, to find quickly what the sum is. Now, also, if we were to look down this way, we see that the step size in between these numbers is uh, six. The difference between one and seven is six. The difference between seven, 13, six, another six, and another step of six. So once again, 13 being in the center of uh, even steps makes it the average. So again, 13 times five gives us the 65. All right, let's do a, uh, a three by three, just as a quick uh, summary. Three by three. One, two, three. One, two, three. Now, here's the middle. We know that it's going to be a one. Three by three gives us nine numbers. We know the nine is going to go at the end. One and nine. It's, uh, the sum is 10, so the average is 5, and we know that the average goes here. And we said that we could take the average and multiply it by the 3 to get what the sum will be. So 3 times 5 is 15, and sure enough, if we check this, we get 1 and 5, 6, plus 9, 15. So that, that's what our magic square is going to look like. So let's write down the rules. Odd number. One goes to the center top. That's the first rule, the second rule, the third rule. Put down here. Move up and to right. So our one is supposed to go up like this. It can't. So right here, top edge, over, and bottom. Over and bottom. Two. We can't go up and to the right. So the next rule is right edge, up and left edge. Up, left edge. Three, okay. Six. See, if blocked, down one. So the three is blocked, so we go down one. Four, five, six. Remember that we're at the top edge, so we can't go up and over. Uh, we can't go up and over this way either. And so the rule number six applies. If blocked, drop down one, seven. We're at the uh, right edge, up and over, eight. Top edge, over and down, 
Nine. The three by three is actually okay. too small to uh, for good practice on these rules. So let's apply these rules to a One, five two, three, by four, five. five. One, two, three, four, five. Here's our middle column. One. Up and over. We can't top edge. Two. Up and over. Three. Hit the edge. So we go up all the way over to the other side. Four. Five, we're blocked. We're not at the e either, either edge, so we drop down one. Six, seven, eight, top edge, so it's all the way down to the bottom. Nine, this way, we hit the right edge. Boom. Ten, we're blocked. Down one. Eleven, twelve, thirteen. 14, 15. Let's take a breather and make sure we're on the right track. This is a 5 by 5, so the last number will be 25. The 25 is going to go here. So if we take the first number and the last number, uh, sum them, it's 26. Half of that is 13. 13 is the average. It should be in the middle. We know that. There's the 13. So since there's five squares and that's the average, we know the sum is going to be 65. All right, let's continue. This is this peculiar corner where we're at both at the right edge and the top edge. So we can't go over, we can't go down to the bottom. And uh, so we just drop down one. Rule six applies when you can't apply four or five. 16 at the edge, 17 down, 18, 19, 20, blocked, down one, 21, 22, at the right edge, so it's over to the other side, and up, 23, 24, we're at the top edge, down to the bottom and over, 25. Okay, uh, let's just check it for the, to be sure. Uh, 4 and 11, 15, 25. The 7 and 3 gives us 30, plus the 10, 40. So we had 25 and 40, 65. Uh, that's all. This will work for any number, uh, any odd number. You could make a 9 by 9. Um, you can also predict what the sum is going to be. Uh, let's consider the next size up here, 7 by 7. Uh, a 7 by 7, the last number is going to be 49. First number is 1, sum them 50. The average is 25. So 25 will go in the center, and it will be 7 of them. So 7 times 25 is uh, 175. That should be the sum of a 7 by 7. What good is this? Well, if you're a youngster, congratulations for uh, exercising your math prowess and logical prowess. If uh, you're older, this is a great way to practice sums, uh, have fun uh, practicing sums and averages with your nieces, nephews, grandchildren, or, or children. I wish to give credit to the man that taught me this in 1962, a uh, high school math teacher, Mr. Bean. Uh, that was a long time ago, and it's time for me to pass this on to another generation. Thank you again.